Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something kind of exciting. I'm going to try and make my own kit. Someone mentioned this in the comments, it'll be on screen somewhere. They said, uh, why don't you make your own kit? And actually, I think that's a pretty awesome idea. And they suggest, uh, I don't know if it's the same person or someone else suggested that it be uh, a clock, but not as complex as this one. You know how much, how annoying this one was. So it's difficult to see in this, uh, in the bright uh, lights. Let's call them studio lights, even though that's not entirely accurate. Uh, but you can, you can see the clock is working there, even if it won't focus. No. It's not going to focus, is it? focus now there we go so you can see that it's working it is currently quarter to six so the seconds bounce up on that uh, little purple LED thing and it's really nice it's easy to see I mean in real life but uh, on camera not so not so easy however this is a bit of a complex project as a kit um, there's a lot of LEDs to solder and it's just not feasible to pick up all these parts and provide a kit for it. Um, however, this is working by the way, so I'll cover that in another video and provide the files to everyone um, if they want to make their own. Um, it, I actually have one of these boards that I can give away, so uh, I will sort that out at some point. I might even be able to throw in some components too. But the project I want to make is going to be a clock. Focus. There we go. I set it on autofocus for pr the first time, I think. In fact, I'm going to put something on here so it's got something to focus on so it doesn't freak out. Uh, so I'm going to be making a clock and I thought an easy one to do would be a binary clock. So that's a clock that has LEDs in this kind of arrangement. Um, I'll Google a picture and I'll put it on the screen. Uh, like that. That might be wrong. Is that wrong? It might be wrong. Anyway, the LEDs would be like this. So uh, you've got one, two, four, eight, like that. So you'd read it that direction. So this would be uh, the hours, those would be the minutes, and these would be the seconds. So you'd have one, two, four, eight. So one and eight is nine seconds. Uh, and let's say it was, let's pretend it is 12.52 and 33 seconds. So in order to show that on here, it would be that one, it would be that one, it would be that one and that one, uh, that one, uh, three would be those two, those two, those two, and those two. So that would be 12.52 and 33 seconds. So I thought, why don't we make one? Uh, it would be easy to do with a microcontroller just to control a bunch of LEDs. However, I thought it'd be more fun if we looked at it as a CMOS kind of project. Oh, this autofocus is gonna drive me nuts. <sighs> okay, no one do an AVE impression. Uh, it's because I've got it on a spot focus and the spot is right there, I think. Anyhow. So I thought we could use a few chips and the ones I've identified of, as being useful here, are the uh, it's 4510, which is a binary, uh, so yeah, a decimal to binary uh, counter. So it's um, a binary coded decimal chip and essentially that's uh, an IC. You put uh, a square wave in here, your clock, your clock pulse, and then out you get your binary coded decimal. So you get your one, two, four, and eight outputs. And that's the four, five, 10. Now, the other one that I would use is a 4017. Now that is a 4017, and that has 10 outputs along one side, and in one side you put a clock input like that. Now, I would use that because this 4510 will count up to nine and then reset, but not all the digits on a clock go up to nine. Some of them do. I mean, that one goes up to nine there, and that one goes up to nine there. But the rest of them, 
actually, and that one goes up to nine if it's 24 hour. So the rest of them don't. So these ones here need special cases for them. And so I can use this 4510 for this one, this one, and that one. But for the other ones, I'm gonna to need to use a 4017. And what I can do with the 4017 is feed one of the outputs into the reset uh, and also into the carryover. So this 4510 has a carryover pin, I think it's on that side actually, which you can chain with another 4510 or 4510 or whatever. So this would be the, oh my God, focus. Please. Okay, I'm turning off all code focus. I can't tell if it's in focus, but that will have to do. So this will be the rough arrangement. We'll do it on this side of uh, the, the uh, little whiteboard here. So I think for the, let's, uh, let's mark them up here. Let's say it's 12, 12, 52 and 33 seconds. So we've got our seconds, minutes and hours. And that's how I'm gonna separate my circuit out. Uh, actually, we'll have a bit at the bottom here, which um, is for our timing, because there's another couple of chips that we're going to be using. And we already made uh, a one hertz pulse before with uh, CMOS chips, so we're going to be doing the same thing. But for the, for the one and two, we're going to have, for one, we're going to use a 4017. And for two, we're going to use a 4510. And then for the 52, uh, we can use a 4510 for the two, and then for the next one, we actually have to use a 4017 and a 4510. So 4017 here and a 4510. The reason I have to use the 4510, God, this looks shit, doesn't it? <laughs> We're going with it anyway. It's only a short explanation of, um, of the circuit that I'm gonna build. So when we breadboard it up, I'll do a nicer diagram. This is just, thoughts coming out of my head for now so you're gonna to have to put up with it so um and for the last two we're gonna have the same arrangement here so if i just turn this a little bit so you can see because i'm left-handed so it makes it difficult for me so we'll have a four five ten and another forty seventeen and on this one is just a four five ten now that I'll explain the reasons why that's happening so this one can count zero to nine and that's fine and then we carry over to the 4017. So this one can only go up to five. So that has to be zero to five. Then once this one's done, it can carry over to this one. This one's allowed to go to zero to nine, so that's fine. That's what the 4510 would do. There is a reset for these chips, but triggering that reset, you need uh, another IC. So that's what that 4017 is doing. In fact, that's uh, going into that chip there. So. Uh, that 4510 will then carry out to the 4017, which is gonna count between zero and five. So that's the top of the minutes. That will then carry out, or rather reset, the 4017 will, uh, so for example, on the 4017, you've got 10 outputs. What we'll do on the fifth uh, or the sixth outputs, so when it carries over again, is we'll reset the chip. We'll use that signal to reset both chips and to carry out as well. So we carry out from there to there. That can, that can count to zero to nine. And then this one will um, we'll take the carry out from there and it's only gonna count from one to, or well, zero to, uh, to two. So that's essentially what I'm going to build. And then I'll make it available in kit form, uh, hopefully. I don't know, you'll have to let me know if that is even remotely attractive to anyone. Uh, so it'll be connected to a bunch of LEDs. Those will be LEDs that you can put anything in. So what I'll do is probably put transistors on each one of those LEDs. So if you wanted to power something um, that took more than 10, 15 milliamps, let's say, then you can do. The other part of the circuit is the one hertz timer. So for that, we're gonna be using a little crystal. That is a, what is it, 13, seven, six, eight kilohertz crystal. It's a watch crystal essentially. And we're gonna be feeding that into a 4060 
which is sort of a, it divides by chip. So um, we'll feed it in, or divide by two, divided 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 by two, and then I think that's as many as it is. And then out of that, you get a two hertz pulse. Now, because we want one hertz, we're gonna use one half of a 4027, which is a JK flip-flop. So we'll use like roughly that many pins and then on the output we'll get one hertz and that's what we're going to feed into the very first one of these four five tens and so that will set the time with buttons so i'll create it so you can have buttons to set the time manually on each one of the digits or you can just scroll through on the minutes and it'll slowly build up but uh, you probably want to do them individually and that'll be it so we'll be able to have high powered leds if you want not even leds i mean if you've got a transistor, you can run practically anything. Uh, so you can just take wires from, from those LEDs up and create whatever enclosure you like. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Um, I've not costed anything up. I don't know how much it will cost really, but uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, I think it's a great idea to make my own kit. I'm really excited about it. And I think I might even write some really badly written instructions to <laughs> to help slash hinder people anyway let me know what you think and also this will be there'll be another video on this darn thing at some point because um it works now it keeps time the reason for that was the uh was there was very little to no decoupling on the board so that was the reason and i sort of explained before why i'd done that but anyway it was embarrassing <laughs> let's skip ahead all right uh let me know what you think and um, if you've got any suggestions, that'd be great. We can make this into one with digits instead. That's easy enough. Um, there are CMOS, this will be a pure CMOS um, board, but um, there are CMOS versions of seven segment drivers that we can take binary coded decimal input into and output um, the like seven segment display. We looked at that before in the 4000 series, series that I did. Uh, anyway, I'm off. Thanks a lot.